an important question that we need to be able to answer is how proteins, as they're being produced within the cell through the process of transcription and translation, find their ultimate target. We know that there are proteins in the mitochondrion, but how did they get there? Where were they first produced and what carried them to the mitochondrion? We know that some cells secrete proteins. How did they get from the steps of being made to being secreted? And so on. So it turns out that proteins have what are called sorting signals. Typically these are at the end terminus, right? The, the uh, beginning, if you will, of the primary sequence. Somewhere near that end terminus, they tend to be relatively short signal sequences, uh, maybe 5 to 10 to 12 amino acids in length. And depending on the pattern of those amino acids, there are what are called signal recognition particles, we'll talk about those in a second, that bind to them. And each signal recognition particle has a place that it takes them. So if it's uh, intended to be in uh, the ER, for example, either because that's where it's going to function or because it needs to be processed before secretion, for example, then it's going to have an ER signal sequence and it's going to be bound by an ER signal recognition particle or an ER SRP. Uh, the same is true with many of the others. So let's think briefly about the two different ways that a protein that's being made in the cell can actually find its home. Um, there are really three ways, I guess, according to this, this figure here. And this figure is from your book. I know it says figure 26. Uh, I think in the latest edition, they bumped it back to figure 30 now. But find this figure, work your way through it. So at the top of the page, you see a ribosome clamped down onto a messenger RNA. The N terminus of the new protein is coming out. And if there is no signal sequence on there, then it will simply be made in the cytoplasm and it'll remain in the cytoplasm. There are many proteins that need to function in the cytoplasm. And so those are free of any sort of a signal sequence. If, however, it's supposed to go to the endoplasmic reticulum, which could then go on to a variety of other structures, then it's going to have an ER signal sequence. Uh, an ER signal recognition particle is going to see that ER signal sequence coming out at the end terminus of the new polypeptide. It's going to grab onto it, and that causes a pause in the translational process until that signal recognition particle can actually deliver the entire unit of the ribosome, the new growing polypeptide in the messenger RNA, to a, a pore or a channel. And, it'll, and that pore channel is on the, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and it'll literally dock the entire ribosome right there on the endoplasmic reticulum. Once it's done that, um, it's got to grab some GTP. We talk a lot about ATP as being the, the main power source of the cell. Turns out GTP, uh, guanine triphosphate, is also a good source of energy. Um, and so this is a GTP utilizing process. So it has to grab a GTP, hydrolyze that GTP, meaning remove one of the phosphates to get some of the energy from it. And that finishes the docking process and it separates the signal recognition particle from the ribosome. And when the, that separation takes place, translation is allowed to resume and this polypeptide is fed through the channel into the ER lumen. And after that, it can be processed. Sometimes there are multiple signal sequences, so there could be an ER sorting signal, and then maybe uh, a few amino acids later, there might be a sorting signal that uh, tells it it needs to go to the lysosome, for example. So there can be multiples of these, and along the way, there are going to be different signal recognition particles that can make sure that these proteins get delivered through their processing to the different places they're supposed to get delivered to. Now that's co-translational sorting. We say it's co-translational because the process of translation, which means reading the mRNA and making a polypeptide, is already in progress when sorting takes place, right? Because we need that N-terminal uh, sorting signal to emerge before the signal recognition particle can grab onto it and deliver it. There's another form called post-translational sorting, and in particular, this is for proteins that are going to go to the nucleus, the mitochondrion chloroplasts, or the peroxisomes, where the entire protein gets made, and only then does a signal recognition particle get a hold of it and deliver it to these different um, 
these different organelles where it's headed. So we can have non-sorting, which means the protein stays in the cytosol. We can have co-translational sorting, which primarily starts in the ER and then can get directed through further signal sequences to various other systems in the endomembrane system or various other uh, organelles in the endomembrane system. Or we can have post-translational sorting, where the full protein gets made in the cytoplasm and only then is its signal sequence recognized by some form of a, a signal recognition particle that delivers it to its endpoint. So an important part of how these organelles work really comes down to whether or not uh, they have signal recognition particles associated with these proteins so that the organelles can receive the proteins that they need. So when you look at this here, uh, this diagram, you can see on top co-translational sorting. So you've got a ribosome reading an mRNA, uh, an ER signal sequence shows up, the signal recognition particle binds it and pauses the process of translation. It delivers it to a signal recognition particle receptor, an SRP receptor that's in the membrane of the, the rough ER, and it's associated with a channel protein. When a GTP is hydrolyzed, the SRP can be released. By releasing it, translation is now resumed, and you can see in the diagram right here in the middle, you can see that the polypeptide continues to be produced through the channel. The signal sequence can get cleaved off. If there are further signal sequences, they will now be exposed and available to other SRPs that can make sure it gets delivered the right way. Uh, once the protein is finished, so once it once the pardon me, once the ribosome is finished reading the mRNA and making the protein, the ribosome falls apart and leaves the rough ER. Remember those ribosomes are not sitting on the rough ER uh, just waiting for an mRNA. They are there because a signal sequence told them to deliver that protein to that surface. And then what you see down below is a system for um, for vesicles that can leave one membrane, such as in the endomembrane system, think of, for example, uh, a surface of membrane from the rough endoplasmic reticulum and deliver the vesicle to the Golgi. How does it know uh, where it's supposed to go? How, do that, how does that vesicle know where it's supposed to go? Well, for one thing, the vesicle on the surface can have motor proteins and it can follow specific highways, if you will, or monorails of microtubules, um, but it's also going to have some more specific interactions going on. On the surface of the vesicle as it leaves, it's going to have something called a V snare, okay, V for vesicle, and snare because it's going to snare something sort of like Velcro. When the vesicle motors along, when it bumps into the right receiving membrane, in this case a Golgi membrane, it knows because the Golgi, in this case, has a T snare, a target snare, that recognizes the V snare. So the T snare and the V snare interact, and that triggers the fusion of the vesicle membrane with the target membrane. So its cargo can be released into the interior of wherever it was headed. So another part of sorting is making sure that these V snares and T snares are properly guiding different vesicles with different cargo from one compartment in the cell to another compartment in the cell. Think your way through some of this. Dig around in your textbook to see if you can find more info to help you out. Remember, you are not just limited to the pages that are assigned to you. You're also not just limited to uh, exactly what I say in class. So be resourceful. Work your way through co-translational sorting. Work your way through vesicle sorting using V-snares and T-snares and let me know if any questions arise.